All right, let's talk rep ranges and resistance levels for building muscle or hypertrophy. So this is the essentials of strength training and conditioning from the National Strength and Conditioning Association. I'm gonna pop this up here on the screen so you can see it. So if you look at the third row down, you see hypertrophy, so this is building muscle. We've got all our goals here, strength, power, muscular endurance, and of course, hypertrophy. So our third row, you see it starts with green. So you know, reps one through five. You do see though, once we get into the yellow, eight to 12 reps, that's our ideal rep range for building muscle. But you see after that, you get into 12 to 15 reps there in the blue, that's still not bad for building muscle. And then again, it goes back to green. So in other words, it's not some sort of hard line, like anything before seven reps doesn't build muscle and anything after 12 reps doesn't build muscle. No, it's more like a bell curve. So there is an ideal rep range but the reason I bring this up is you're not confined to it. You don't have to feel like you're locked into it, that you always have to train in eight to 12 reps. Matter of fact, there's a lot of times where I'm training at 15 reps, sometimes even 20 reps. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite set and rep schemes I'm gonna share with you at the end of this video, end up using 20 reps and 15 as well. So that's number one. Reps, it's safe to say, generally we're gonna stick primarily in that eight to 12 range. But the big thing that you need to consider, it's not just about how many reps you're doing, it's about how hard are those reps. In other words, not just the number of reps, but the resistance level you're using, and even a step beyond that, which is the amount of control, or let's call it time under tension per rep, that plays a part as well. Because our goal with building muscle isn't just about how much weight we move and how many times we move it, ultimately it really boils down to how hard are we making the muscle work? My goal is how many reps do I need and how much weight do I need until I finally reach that feeling, that level of fatigue or that level of stimulus needed to build muscle. Now, when it comes to calculating our ideal resistance level, traditionally, again, going back to our book here, I'll pop this up. This is the chart that we reference for calculating one rep max. So if we were to go down this chart here, let's say we're doing bench press, and I'm able to do, let's say 200 pounds is my one rep max. Then for 10 reps, I should be able to do 150 pounds. Well, that sounds good. It sounds pretty clear cut, right? Problem is it's not so simple. One thing, that's calculated off of a single set. Most hypertrophy training programs, we know we're using multiple sets per exercise. So just because you could do 150 pounds for one set doesn't mean you can do it for two, three, or even potentially four sets. So you might need to go down in resistance. So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two, when calculating your one rep max, that's all out. That's how much weight we can move. And so we're going all at it as explosive as possible. We're not focusing on controlled rep speed or time under tension or controlled eccentrics. So there's a big difference between say a rep count of maybe one second or less versus two to three seconds in a rep like we would with a lot of our, our hypertrophy training programs. So again, just because you can do 150 pounds for 10 reps, doesn't mean you can do 150 pounds for 10 reps when we have double or even triple the amount of time under tension because we've got controlled reps. Now, theoretically, you could actually test your one rep max using more controlled form the point that I'm trying to make here, if you're wondering what that is, it's not just about how many reps you're doing or how much weight you're using, it's about the control, which includes your rep speed as well. And although you can build a lot of muscle using faster rep speeds, there's a lot of different ways to get the same result. Personally, I prefer to use more control. I like to use that as a tool for progression to make my workouts harder as opposed to always feeling like I have to go heavier and heavier and heavier because I think we've all experienced that before where as we try to progress, we feel this need to go up in resistance but the heavier we go, sometimes the more it compromises our form. We're at higher risk for injury and a lot of times we don't feel the exercise the same way we do when we're using a little bit lighter resistance. So for me, I go down just a little bit in resistance. I up the intensity by using more controlled reps, and that way I'm able to feel the muscle more and reduce the risk of injury, which are important goals for me personally. So 
I would say those are the two challenges with just using your one rep max as your means of figuring out your ideal resistance level, but it is a great reference point. You know, my best suggestion is use it as a starting point. And that's the most important thing. We have to figure out where do we start and from there you start to make adjustments. It is trial and error. You are your own experiment. There's no one who's going to be able to learn your body like you can. So you can try taking the advice of someone else, but honestly, I don't feel anyone should give anybody fitness advice. I feel like you could give someone tips or share what works for you, but we're all a little bit different and you have to learn what works for you. Now, I did promise you that I would share with you a set and rep structure that I liked, especially incorporating some higher reps. And I've had a lot of people through the years come to me and say, man, James, that was a total game changer for me. I've gotten you know, so much better results. I'm able to really get that mind muscle connection and just really improve the quality of my workout. So I call that the 20, 10, 10, 15. And what that is, is first set is 20 reps, set two and set three or 10 reps. And of course, set number four is 15. But here's the purpose of that. Set number one, 20 reps. It's not to warm up, although it does serve that purpose as well. But the real purpose here is to use a little bit lighter weight to feel the exercise, to feel the muscle, to develop that mind-muscle connection, to set the benchmark of what that exercise should feel like. Because a lot of times when we jump to heavier resistance levels, we end up just thinking about, hey, how do I get the reps? And we end up compromising our technique, our form, and we don't feel those same strong contractions that we should. I see this a lot, especially in back exercises. So by go going a little bit lighter, we're able to focus more on technique, get that mind-muscle connection, and really feel that muscle working. And that's gonna set a benchmark of what you should feel in every single set. So the goal as we go to 10 reps isn't just go as heavy as we can for 10 reps. The goal is to keep the same feeling that we had in set number one, but bring the resistance level up and keep that same kind of mind-muscle connection that same good, strong contraction every single rep. Same thing with set three. So what's the purpose of set four? Well, we go back to our original weight that we used in set number one, where we were able to use 20 reps. And I use set number four as kind of a barometer for people to really kind of do a gut check to see if they had the proper amount of intensity that they should have in set one, two, and three. Because if you can come into set four and do 20 reps again like you did in set one, then you probably didn't push yourself hard enough in set one, two, and three. So it's a way to kind of you know zero in on finding that perfect balance between the right resistance level to create the stimulus you need, but at the same time still keeping you know that disciplined form and that mind-muscle connection that I think is really important when it comes to building muscle because out of all the people that I've trained with through the years, professional bodybuilders, the one thing that they all have in common is they know how to feel an exercise and they're able to zero in on it. Even people with very different techniques, that's the one thing that they share in common. So moral of the story is you don't always have to worry about how much weight you're using or how many reps you're doing. The bigger thing is you gotta feel the muscle and you gotta make sure that you're working that muscle hard don't just get hung up on technique. Also keep in mind that it's about just good old fashioned work, some grit, some intensity, and make that muscle work. And if you can create that kind of stimulus, the muscle will grow.